why is research and specifically conducting investigations important? Well, learning to conduct research is an integral part of learning about life. Performing research provides you with a way to pursue your interests, to learn something new and to hone your problem-solving skills. Let's look at some important steps in planning a scientific investigation. When planning an investigation, I like to use the four question strategy. First, I need to know what materials are available for conducting experiments on my topic of choice at school, at home, at college, at university, or anywhere else I have access to. Next, I need to know what I will be measuring and how, especially the measuring apparatus I will need. Thirdly, I try to think of all the ways I could change the original setup of my experiment that might lead to a change in the factor that I'm measuring. And lastly, I need to think up of ways in which I can describe the responses and changes. I find it very helpful to draw a diagram of what I plan to do. This is called the experimental setup. This helps me to visualize my experiment and it can make the procedure to follow much easier to understand, especially if someone else has to repeat it. There are a few simple rules that you can follow when making this drawing. These would include draw in pencil and use neat strong lines. Don't use shading in your diagram. Always add a heading that states what this drawing is about and label lines. Make them in pencil, have them point directly to the structure. They shouldn't cross and, if possible, they should align on the right hand side. I use the six steps of the scientific method. Firstly, I would question, design a question that I can investigate. Next, I should have some form of a prediction of what I expect the results should look like. I need to make sure that I have the materials that I need. I have to have a procedure that I can follow step by step. At some point, I have to take my results, um, which would include measurements, and then I can draw a conclusion that would either accept or reject my hypothesis. After I have observed something new or interesting, I always start with questions. Who else saw what I saw? What is happening here? When does this action take place? Where does this action take place? Why is this happening? And how is this happening? I have researched some in a library or online, we can now ask a question of what is the effect of X on Y, where X would represent our dependent variable and Y would represent our independent variable. Here we form a hypothesis that can be tested. It should be a prediction written in the future tense, it is an educated guess of what you think will happen. For example, if X is increasing, then Y could be decreasing. Or if X were decreasing, then Y could be increasing. It's usually written in the format of if, then, and should always include the cause and the effect. So to recap, we have three types of variables. The first is your independent variable. This will be what you change in the experiment. You decide what it is and it will be plotted on the x-axis. Next, we have the dependent variable. This is what you measure in your experiment and this will be plotted on the y-axis. And lastly, we have the controlled or fixed variable. This is everything that must be the same in the experiment, which could include your apparatus, your organism and the environment it is found in. This is very important to ensure that your experiment will be a valid experiment. Validity is one of the factors that should always be checked when we are looking at our experiment. For validity, we look at the variables. For accuracy, we need to take an average of our results and we have to make sure that the apparatus we use is the correct apparatus. And lastly, in order to make sure that experiment is reliable, we need to repeat the experiment anytime, anywhere, or have more setups. Planning your method is just as important as everything else. First, you need to decide on the time and the date and the place where you need to conduct your investigation. Decide on your apparatus and materials that you need. Decide how you are going to record your data. 
decide on the factors you need to keep constant to make it valid, the number of setups or repeats, and how you're going to calculate your average. If people are involved in the study, decide on the number of participants, the composition, their age, gender, weight, height, etc. Develop your indemnity forms, make your recruitment available and get permission to perform your tasks. Now you are ready to provide a step-by-step -step instruction list written as num a numbered list. Use verbs in the active voice, clear short connected sentences, give warnings for dangerous steps, give cautions where you need to avoid mistakes and give clarifying notes for your experiment. Let's put all of this together in an example of an experiment. Let's ask what is the effect of the presence of a leaf which would then be our independent variable and that represented by X on the production of carbon dioxide. This would be our dependent variable, what we have to measure at the end of this experiment. If the experiment valid, we need to fix some of our variables, such as we need to use the same size and shape measuring cylinder, the same type and volume of solution, and incubate it for the same time period. This then concludes the planning phase of your experiment. In the next edition, we're going to look at how you can analyze your results by making quantitative and qualitative observations, how to complete one or more tables of results, how to do necessary calculations to get accurate results, how to draw appropriate graphs, and how to interpret these graphs, as well as how to draw a conclusion for your experiment.